All right, all right. So we are live. Uh, we are on the All About Pressure Washing. We are on Quote IQ channel. And uh, everybody knows this guy, Cody, from Southeast Soft Wash. What's up? What's up? What's going on? So, uh, yeah, we were just talking about some of the things that um, – that you've got going on over at Southeast and uh, exciting things in the uh, on the ground already and in the pipeline. Uh, you want to touch on any of those while uh, while we're fresh? Yeah, so we're we're like this far away from super pumps getting out the door. Uh, I was just telling Mike we're expecting our motors are custom made, the base plates custom made, you know, and it's got the mounting for the electronics. So uh, those are inbound. They're air freighted so they could show up today they could show up tomorrow it's it's like an any day now kind of thing as soon as they get here uh that's a hundred super pumps that we're going to build here in-house and get them out the door so that's super cool i've given away all my prototypes i had about a half a dozen prototypes and uh sent a few of those out to some youtube guys and played with played with some here but yeah it's 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 about that far i'm, I'm really excited about getting them out the door so yeah, I'm excited about seeing these things firsthand. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've been using the 24 volt that you put on all of your stuff and uh, super excited about, you know, what's to come. But uh, in this video today, we wanted to talk about something that, and I know Cody and I both probably get a little bit of shit from, you know, the, uh, the viewership on our channels about how we sometimes react to customers and what, a lot of people don't understand is we're in the volume business, right? And when I say that, I mean that, you know, Cody did, I don't even know. Can I share? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm real open about it. Yeah. $1.1 million last month. We're nine days into this month and he's on track to exceed that. Right. So if you do the math, right. And, and not all of his equipment and not all of his, you know, not everything's on the inexpensive side. So you're doing a, a substantial amount of work and there is a lot of labor and, and love that goes into what, what they do over at Southeast soft wash. Um, we have got, a not a, not, we're not a giant wash business, but we have got a shit ton of customers. And when you have been in business for as long as I have, as well as the guys over at Southeast, um, you have got lots of stories to talk about. You've had lots of experience. You've dealt with a lot of different people. And with that, we take those stories and we share them with our audiences. And, and, you know, uh, people are like, well, it sounds like you sure have a problem with a lot of people. Well, no, a very small percentage. But yeah. if I was to tell everybody happy stories about rainbows and and unicorns, nobody would give a damn. So yeah. we like to share the things that um, you know that that are, are things that you're probably going to run into if you stay in business for a while. You are going to run into the issues, the problems, the issues with potential, you know, with with customers and Karens and whatnot. Uh, you will run into those, and it's a lot better to not go into those blind and to have some background, right? Oh, well, yeah, Mike and Cody or Aaron and, and Justin, they talked about a situation like this. Now I can, you know, kind of replay in my mind how they went about dealing with that, you know, take it, implement it if you want, or just take little bits and pieces and, and go about it in the right way. But today we wanted to talk about why you shouldn't work for shitty customers, how you should, um, react and, and, you know, try to salvage if you feel it's necessary, but uh, Cody, you want to talk about this at all? Yeah, I'm real. I'm real passionate about this topic because five or six years ago, as I was going into the business and kind of blowing it up, and it was we were getting a lot of traction. I was looking at the landscape and thinking, okay, you know, if we keep on this current trajectory, I'm going to go insane because we have the whole gamut. You got great customers, you got crappy customers, and so there's. I'll give you guys the cheat code. The guy that I patterned a lot of what I do after. I just liked his channel. Matter of fact, down to the color scheme, the red, black, and and that whole theme, it's a it's a tactical guy. It ain't nothing to do with pressure washing. His company's named Special Operations Equipment. He's based in Tennessee. His name's John Willis. If you guys are in the, the tactical gun world, you probably know who SOE is. Um, dude's just, he's just him. And that's what I said. You know what? I did this business. I started this because I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be me. And uh, if you start a, first of all, if you're pricing incorrectly, and you're marketing incorrectly, you're going to attract sort of an avatar that you may find yourself not liking to deal with. And what we've been trained and told by corporate America is the customer is always right. So what you'll default to is saying, oh, well, hell, I guess I just got to cater to all these people. And then you're miserable in your business. Well, that was not 
the point of this, guys. The point was to make money, be happy, right? Move the happy needle, move the the time, the time free needle, you know, the set your own skin. All that shit, you're gonna have to grind through. But if you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, it just doesn't feel like it's gonna get any better. And some portion of that is is bad customer experiences. Uh, 20% of your customers will take up 80% of your time. So I decided I'm just not going to do it. And what that means is today in the moment and for the foreseeable gap, I've got to deal with the monster I created. Right. And so we're going to work through that, but I've also got to today start retraining the market as to who we are, what we tolerate and reattracting a different avatar of the guy that I want to deal with. Right. The, this imaginary person right here, because we've all had it. We've all had the guy that's the customer, you know, guy, girl, whatever, that's super easy. They, they're they stoked. They got, they jive with the gel of your company. You're in sync. You got good synergy, right? With the corporate term, but you know what I'm talking about. Then you've got the opposite end of that. So the long game, what I talk about on my channel a lot is, is the long game. It's rebranding, re remarketing. I did a video yesterday where I was talking about, I sent Mike and the guy's uh, text yesterday morning off of another guy's pressure washing channel <laughs> dude that was upset because he had to buy a hitch on his truck well, okay hey go ahead go ahead <laughs> i gotta read it because it's this was great, mind blowing it's Hold great on. text it's good text and 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 so the funny part is that was in the morning right cody and i we wake up really early um I but think. so Cody sends this and I, and I, I, like, I don't even know how to respond initially. Right. Because it's, it's just absolutely insane. But so this is, this is the text. Um, working on building my rig slowly. What people don't tell you in these videos first must have a truck with a hitch or anything with a hitch. If not, you are out the gate spending $2,000 before getting started. Blew my mind. That's where I am now, slowly buying equipment, marketing materials, et cetera. Um, I'm a trading finance dude as well. I trade futures every blue moon. Keep being real. Okay, so with that being said, there's, there's a couple takeaways. Did somebody really need to tell this guy that he needed a trailer hitch to pull a trailer on the rig that he's building? Did, did you need to watch a video for that? Like, that's that's mind blowing. And secondly, dude, if you're trading anybody else's money but yourself and you ask stupid questions like that, stop doing that, right? Because you're going to lose people a lot of money because you're a moron. Total moron. And I Googled it quickly yesterday, uh, a complete receiver package for most trucks. It's about 300 bucks, like the whole kit, the whole kit, not the well, hitch, probably, the whole he, kit. So. He was probably talking about the $2,000 that he was going to go buy a truck with a hitch because that's all he could afford because he's a moron. But like but I, those, I, I those that the video go, I took that video as an opportunity and I made a rant about it. Right. And so in the comments of my video from yesterday, I had a guy, I had a couple of guys saying, why do you make these videos? You know, why are you, why do you waste your time? on? I'm like, no, Mike gets this too, because he'll, he does a lot of shorts. Look, the whole nightly news is negative. Why? Because that's what people watch. If I did a positive, happy story, you're not going to watch it. So it's a tactical move. Their other reason is I'm highlighting the stupidity in hopes and, and knowledge that I'm training the future market. that this guy wasn't even a customer of mine. He just a, he just a dummy in the ether, but it's a great, it's a good one to hold up and say, see that, don't do that. And so when people relate that to my channel, the brand, the logo, the imagery, they say, well, if that's me, I shouldn't buy from them. And they self default out of the funnel. Right. And here's what they do. They go to the, my competitors funnels and they go ham up and clog up their arteries and they <laughs> bog down their salespeople and they're mad. What are you going to help? How are you going to help this guy? Mike, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything from anything. So wherever he buys equipment from, is it going to be right? It wouldn't matter if it oh, is right. He's going to tear it up. He's going to be mad. He's going to have a one star. So I, what I'm doing, that again, like I said at the beginning, this is long game. I'm circumventing the battlefield. Now, right. if you haven't built your company to that point or a straggler comes through the defenses, right, you still got to deal with that individual person. The long game is to structure your company in a way that don't take the BS and then you'll find that you just get less BS coming inbound. But I don't burn down every single person. And this is the big caveat. When we do screw up, when we screw up, we own it a thousand percent. We go like through the moon. I document it too, like drive across the country, 
fixing stuff or taking care of the customer. Because if I even remotely feel like we might have screwed up, we go above and beyond to fix it. And so what that does is you've you've shored up your defenses on all points. You've attracted mostly the correct avatar that's coming to your business every day that you can please, right? You can jive with. You're now you've got freed up bandwidth because most of your people ain't a problem. So you got customer service energy to give to the ones that need it or maybe borderline, right? So you can salvage those. Here's how I know I'm right. As much of a jackass as people think I am on online, I'm just being truthful. And I've got tens of millions in revenue and a 4.9 rating on Google and a 4.78, 4.8 on Facebook. So if I wasn't doing it right, those metrics would not, I, I'd be a two, right? So as, as loud and boisterous as I am about it, on what you guys don't see is on the back end, we do take care of our customers. We're just building, this is so 30,000 foot view of your business. You're no longer reactive. You're playing the 10 year game and that's what you got to get to. Right. And, and conversely, we can relate this all back to wash businesses or any home service business because you're going to all, you know, we're marketing to, you know, a broad spectrum of customers. Although, you know, I really try to niche down and target very specific customers because over time you understand who your ideal customer is, who that perfect avatar is for your business, right? And typically those are the people that I target that aren't going to be as big of an issue. At least it substantially reduces the percentage of problems that, you know, that people, um, are, are going to complain about, right? When, when, when people understand the value you provide, they don't want to do the things that you provide, the services that you provide, they are more willing, they're more understanding, and they understand that there is a cost associated with these things. And those people tend not to, not to be problem people. Now, every once in a blue moon, you do have those. And, and that's when you have to determine, okay, is this a point where I'm going to salvage this relationship, this customer? Is it worth it, right? Or am I going to just say, screw it? I don't ever want to work for people like this again or this particular person again. Now, one of the things that we built into Quote IQ is the blacklist, right? That and that was nothing cool. that I'd seen in any other software out there. Dude. And essentially what it does is if we have an issue with the customer, I hit the little black switch or the blacklist uh, toggle and that customer is blacklisted. So the next time they call in and they always do, that's the problem. My mm -hmm. customers that have issues, they call me year after year. Right. And then I'm like, Oh, and, and sometimes because of the volume that we do, I don't remember the specific things. We've got a lot of stuff on automation and they can slip through the cracks. And that's why that blacklist button is so good. Uh, a notification comes up and says blacklist customer is requesting a quote. And then we can go and we can evaluate. But right. Just like the other day, I had an issue with a customer and um, they 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 left a one star review um, and we hadn't even serviced the property yet. There was miscommunication. Uh, there was tech, technological uh, miscommunication, if you will. She uh, didn't get a message, that, a text that I'd sent her directly from my iPhone to her iPhone or so she said. And um, and then because we showed up the net or two days later because there was rain and all kinds of storms, um, she got all huffy and puffy. Turned out to be a super sweet lady. We did the job. She was happy. She paid her invoice. She left us a five-star review. But I could have just been like, bloop, like we're out. But, right. you know, again, it, it's really all dependent upon the situation that you're facing at that particular time. I know that Cody puts up with a bunch of bullshit. I know that he gets people that are calling his office and clogging up the arteries, so to speak, the phone lines. You had to go and hire a, uh, a huge, um, you know, like a big team to answer phone calls because yeah. you were getting calls from people that have never even purchased anything from you, but they want your help because they see you on YouTube to diagnose issues with their soft wash pump or tell them how to wire something. And, you know, while you're a good guy and you provide a ton of free information on YouTube for everybody to consume, they think that because they see you and they know your face, that you are at their beck and call 24 seven. And when you don't respond, when you don't answer that email or that phone call, that you're an asshole. And like, I get, just like you were saying earlier, I am boisterous. I am loud. And I do these things again with intent, right? right. Uh, nobody in, and there are a lot of nice people out there, right? And I'm a nice guy. Like I am a charitable guy. I love a lot of things, but I also understand what, you know, moves the needle in a lot of things as well. And because of that, I share 
experiences that, you know, are going to push buttons intentionally. And, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but we're not jerks. We're no, just out there doing all. our thing. And I think a lot of guys resonate with that, right? That That's one of the things that drew me to that company I was talking about earlier, special operations equipment. I like the way he did. And if you guys want to laugh, go to his channel, type in, go to YouTube and type in S O E rant. And he's got epic rants. Like these are creme de la creme of stupid customers, you know, guys that order the wrong size belt and it's his fault. I'm like, dude, he just made what you ordered. You know, it's like, Yesterday, the phones, me and Ty walked outside. So we brought our call service back in house now, which was the goal. We've got a, a receptionist. Her mother passed away uh, Monday, late Monday night or Sunday night. So she's out of pocket. Well, we're Ty's answering the phone. So just picking up the slack where she's not there. And bless her heart, she's great at it. Like she's she's the person for that. We walked outside, loaded a guy, skid up and came back. Ty had 25 missed phone calls. So I was like, what do you do with that? You know, this guy, this Woods Colt, he's a, he's a dumbass too. He commented on my channel this morning and I blocked him because he's an idiot. So you might want to kill him. But he was like, you're, you're, you took this from a learning moment to a proud boys moment. I looked at his channel, this guy that just commented here, Woods Colt. Yeah. Uh, he looks like he's made of granola. He's up Pacific Northwest looking ass about mid forties. Probably ain't got laid in a long time like four or five videos, weird videos. Like it's just a silly guy. So you see that guy, see that he just, that's the guy I don't want to buy nothing from me because he's dumb. He's taken <laughs> up for a dumb thing. If you can take up for the guy that don't know what a hitch is, that's you. You're that guy. If you don't know that you're that guy, you walk into the friend group and you don't know who that guy is. It's you. All of the guys around, they look at you that way. But what we're trying to do is not deal with those people. I'll give you an example. We sent a guy uh, somewhere in the Midwest a case of gutter guard, right? He ordered a four-pack case. He got his case. Well, it had leaked. This is UPS thing, okay? But he had only lost literally a cap full. He had the four jugs sitting beside each other, and he took a photo. And you couldn't even see the levels all looked the same. But one of the jugs had leaked. And, Mike, I'm telling you, it was like a communion cup the little plastic communion cups. It was like yeah. that, not even really enough to, now I do get it. It did have a leak. I, I get it. But the way he emailed in was like, this is bullshit. I don't know what you guys are doing over there. Like, Hold on a minute, Turbo. Calm down there, little Sparky. You lost, like I've spit loogies out bigger than the amount of fluid, Kim, that you lost. Okay. Calm down. He wanted me to give him a whole other free case. So you know what he got? Blacklisted. Because I don't, it's one thing if you say, hey man, let's let y'all know that we know it's a thing, okay? We ship literally hundreds of thousands of gallons of chemicals a year. It's gonna happen. It doesn't matter how much quality you do. You know, we tape the lids down, we package them right. So as a percentage of what goes out the door, it's like 0. 0.0 something percent of damages. Now, if it's like damage, damage, and it's for real damage, we'll send you another case. It's fine. Not a problem. We well, don't care about that. That ain't. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't be crazy. That's what I'm saying. And so what I do is I blacklist those customers. That feature in Quote IQ for you guys, washing is freaking amazing. Because like you said, you start doing Mike's, Mike's wash companies bigger than I ever grew my wash company to. I got something on my shirt. <laughs> um, I, they'll come back and it's like, why are you here? I thought you didn't like us, you know, but they won't. They're so dumb. They'll just keep coming back and you won't remember. So dude, that is a, that's a really smart feature you guys built into that. I yeah. love that. We love it. I wish I had one that we built into the resource page, right? Um, I got, Oh my God. <laughs> dude, I got an angry email yesterday from this guy and I, and it's, it's, it's bad. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, and we actually, get them all the time, guys, with the courses and stuff. And uh, I don't sell nearly the amount of courses that the other guys sell. I got some out there, though. There's some on my site, you know. That you buy it, it automatically sends, okay? And they type their email in wrong or they fat finger it. But then they don't check their spam. Listen, I've been doing this damn internet thing a long time, okay? Spam's th go check that spam folder. It's, they don't know, but they're mad. They're like super mad. 
Yeah, this guy was mad. So he sent this email and he said that he wanted a refund. He purchased How to Wash and he bought the customer contract. How to Wash was delivered um, via email, like you said. He got it. Um, and I went and I looked and, and we can see how much of it was watched. 48%. So this gentleman watched 48% of it. He got the contract, was downloaded. So now that's his. And he was like, hey, um, I feel like maybe you guys um, are, you know, he goes, I, I feel like you were deceptive in what you were selling. He goes, I bought how to wash. Okay. Let's think about that. How to wash. I bought how to wash and I went through it and all it shows me is how to mix the chemicals and how to clean the different surfaces on a house, like the roof and everything else. Um, I thought that I was getting how I can run my pressure washing business, how I can market my pressure washing business. I feel like um, there was just a, a whole lot of misconceptions when you're out there selling this. And, and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, holy moly, it's called how to wash, right? <laughs> how to wash. And, and so I can almost guarantee Everybody, including myself, is sick of this face, right? Because every time I watch any channel, guess what you're going to probably see? You're probably going to see me pitching how to wash because it is the number one selling pressure washing and soft washing course for the past three years. And if you need help mixing chemicals, learning how to clean any surface on a residential property from the roof to like, everybody knows it because I say it all the freaking time. Nowhere in it does it say, I'm going to teach you how to start a pressure washing business, how to form an LLC. I'm not going to teach you that you need to incorporate. I'm not going to teach you how to market your business. I am teaching you one thing only. And that is six hours of consolidated training on one very specific topic, which is the name of the course. And it's how to wash. So this guy was confused. And I thought, okay, this is a great opportunity to have a little conversation with him. So I get on the microphone and I get on the camera and I get on the phone and I call the guy and we have a conversation. And it was, it was heartbreaking to talk to this guy because he was exactly the person that we never want to do business with. And, and to like, wait till what I'm about to tell. I said, okay, where did you hear about this? And he goes, well, I watched your videos and I've seen the ads that you run on YouTube. And I was like, okay. And I, I recorded all of those. And I know that I've never promised anything other than how to mix chemicals, how to use the equipment, understanding the processes, you know, pro tips, all of those things, right? If you want to learn how to soft wash, pressure wash, buy how to wash, that's it. Um, and he goes, well, I just assumed that uh, I was going to learn all this other stuff. I was like, Hey, how much did you pay for it? And he's like, well, I got it for half price. And I was like, okay. And he, it was like, he said it was like $199. I was like, okay. So for $199, you thought that you were going to get, you know, everything, not, not only the basics, which is so cheap, $199 at half price, you know, it's ridiculous. But this guy thought he was going to get the world for that price. And I said, can I ask you something? Is $199 a lot of money for you? And he goes, well, yeah, quite honestly it is. And on his signature, on his, on his uh, email, it said he was a realtor, right? And I said, so do you work for somebody else? Because I'm trying to understand who mm -hmm. this is and how I could do something different. I know there's nothing I could do different. This guy was just special, but he, um, he said, yeah, I, um, I, I've, I've, I've worked for other people in the past. And I was like, well, what do you do right now? I said, I said it said you're a realtor. He's like, no, no, that didn't work out. He goes, um, I, I do like odd jobs and handyman stuff. And you know, I was like, well, how's that going? He's like, well, that didn't really work out either. And I said, can I ask how old you are? And he goes, 57. Oh, my God. And I was like, holy moly. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to refund you for how to wash. And you watched half of it, 48%. I'm not going to refund you half the price. I'm going to give you all of your money back. I can't refund you for the customer contract because you have that already. You downloaded it. It's yours. Hope, hope, hope you can use it. I'll refund you full price that you paid for how to wash, but do me a favor and please never make any online purchases ever again, because I think that you get confused easily. And I think that you probably make mistakes often. And there might not be somebody as considerate as I am on the other end of this transaction. So please just do yourself a favor and never buy anything online. Just go to Walmart and buy all your shit. And so with all of that being said, he then ends the call with this. Okay, great. If I ever buy anything else, I'm going to call you. And I said, please no. don't. Please. Like, no, 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 don't, don't call no. Me. you can't figure it's, it out. It's like, dude. And so these are, you'll start questioning your sanity guys. You'll be like, am I crazy? But what you got to keep in, in remembrance is, and you need to audit this. 
If you're getting a ton of these by ratio, right, then that means you've got an internal problem and you need to go fix that in your process is somewhere. But if it's literally like one in a blue moon, that means that's a crazy person. And so you don't have to, you don't have to, I'm giving you permission. You don't have to put up with that shit. The customer ain't always right. I don't give a damn what Walmart says. This is not Walmart. This is not Burger King. Okay. You can have it this way. And my guarantee is it'll be excellent. I'm not guaranteeing the moon. I can't help it that you can't read. It's like they'll, you know, we get crazy people all the time. So you'll, you'll have them. I've had them before. <laughs> and this was my fault. Like I had to take some level of, okay, the market is that dumb. Let me go change it. And that's where, you know, like quote IQ is helpful because it's line item. But we quote a house wash, schedule a house wash, do the house wash. Customers mad because they didn't get the roof cleaned. I'm like, but we didn't. That was not part of the thing, but the roof's part of the house. I'm like, well, okay. So, yeah, but like your mailbox is part of your property too. You know, like where does it end? Where does the, and, the, and, and you got to kind of suss that out. Like, is this just a stupid person or did you have some, is there something you can do to kind of alleviate if it's happening over and over again? But the long game, you know, and, and look guys, I can do this a lot more because I'm not running a local business. And so I, I try to highlight sort of the big strategy, but I wouldn't recommend to take uh, my approach to a local wash business as heavy handed because you're not dealing with global shipping and, you know, I can afford to do that. Um, it's actually smart for me to do what I do. But if you're running a local truck, you're going to have to take a lot less. You're going to have to bite your tongue a lot more and just take it as a learn and relay out the battlefield because you don't want to get, you know, 10 negative reviews to your, your 50 that you, you had up there. That's going to crush your, your, uh, your rankings. And so you don't want to do that, but be careful. But at the same time, don't bend over backwards because if you get your company in bend over backwards mode, is that what you started business for? These are the people that order the steak. They eat three quarters of it and then it's not cooked right. Right. These mm -hmm. are, they exist. And most of the time it comes from a place of poverty. Like the guy Mike was just talking about, he's broke as hell. So he's, he's scratching and clawing, right? He's broke. And it, when you're broke, you can't afford to be civil. You can't afford to do the right thing. He's trying to make everything everybody else's problem. Like Payne's pressure washing just said, I see him all the time. He comments a lot. They don't, they can't afford to take accountability because they're so poor. Everything's like $199 ain't a lot of money. I spend that in rehab, monster rehabs probably a month. It's not, it's no money. It ain't, it really ain't like if it's a fact, I watched a guy at the gas station yesterday. I was getting gas in the defender. The, the boys were with me. We were pumping gas. The guy comes out of the store. I'm always kind of looking around and the dude literally bent over to pick up a penny. And I pointed that out. I said, Mike and Preston, look at that, that grown man, 40 something years old. Just so you see what he just did. And they were like, what do you do? So he bent over and picked up a penny and they didn't like what? So what dad? I'm like, never do that. A penny show you just no broke people say that shit. A penny is a penny. And it's not going to make any difference in your day, month, year, or life. Now, if it's a hundred bucks, if it's if it's a 20, if it's a five dollar bill, I might pick it up. I may walk past that. I don't know. Could be a scam, could be a gospel track disguised <laughs> as a five dollar bill, right? But if you're in that bandwidth of thinking, those people can't, they're never gonna be good customers. You're better off to nix them, move on with life and then figure out how to acquire a better customer base. Yeah. Where Mike lives, Mike's subdivision, I've been to Mike's house a bunch of times, that's your ideal, that's what we're all shooting for, right? When we're driving with the wife, like, yeah, I'd love to get some jobs in that subdivision. I'd love to get some jobs in that late community, right? Then we all have done it. We go past the one that's like a level down from there, and you're like, yeah, you know, I'd take a job from there, but <laughs> I'm not like marketing that. And then you go down another level, and you don't want jobs from here. Cause it ain't going to never be good enough for them. Nothing's good enough for them. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And, and you know, you were talking about the bending over for the penny. I agree a hundred percent. And it reminded me of a video that I saw and this is a uh, brilliant marketing, right? And it's something that I thought was great. And I want to say it was like maybe in New York city or something and a Chinese restaurant they had uh, on the front of, it was a perfect size, like dollar bill, or it wasn't a dollar bill. It was a hundred dollar bill because most people wouldn't bend over for a dollar, right? 
but it was it, it was a replica of a dollar bill and on the reverse side it was their menu right and they fold it and they throw it on the ground all over new york city and if you've been to new york or any major city you walk around and people are always handing you flyers hey you know restaurant tour this that and you're like no 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 right like it's it's like the worst thing ever when somebody tries to hand me something i don't want to touch that but they these people are brilliant they got the 20 dollar bill or the 100 dollar bill folded in half throw it on the ground people are like oh, oh. 20 dollar bill pick it up and they're like oh fuck right it's a, <laughs> it's it's a menu but they don't, they're not putting it on the back of a dollar bill, right? Yeah. Because they probably know who their target audience is. And, and it's definitely not somebody that's bending over to pick up a penny. That's sad. It's like when I see the people on the side of the road picking up like cigarettes butts that people have thrown out of their car window. Like oh, life crazy. has gotten pretty bad. And, and there's a lot, I mean, I won't even get into that, but it's just, it's, it's one of those things. My dad, um, when I was growing up, I remember we were at uh, back, this is back in the day, we were at a, a, a shopping mall, probably one of the ones that you guys go up to in Atlanta. I think it was like Phipps Plaza or something. Yeah. And we yeah. walked through like Macy's or whatever the department store was. And he used to, he loved pens, right? Like, like you love knives and guns, right? He loved pens, Mont Blancs and all these yeah. you know, yeah. ridiculous pens. And I, I was with him one day and I was looking at these pens and, you know, he would, the, they, the, and back then they'd have like a lady that came and there was a display case and she'd be like, oh, sir, which, which, you know, what would you like to see? He's like, oh, let me see that one. And she'd take it out and she'd present it to him and he'd, he'd take it and he'd write with it and he'd stick it in his, you know, his whatever, right? It was a whole thing, right? And, and to me, it was, it was laughable back then as it is now. But um, I, I said to him, I was like, dad, I said, like, that's a hundred dollar pen. And I was like, there's no difference between that hundred dollar pen and this, you know, 30 cent pen that I'm, that somebody gave me. It's like some advertising. This is beaches from my vacation. Right. Um, and, and he goes, well, the difference is a uh, hundred dollars to me is like a dollar to you. Right. And that always stuck with me. It was like, okay, that makes sense. And, and it put a lot of things into perspective, which has helped me grow, which has helped me set goals and achieve those goals because I don't want to be the dollar guy. I want to be the hundred dollar guy that can go and buy whatever it is that he wants whenever he wants. And I'm by no means, I can't go buy anything that I want, but I'm to a point now where um, I put in the work, I put in the effort and I continue to do the things that I need to do on a daily basis to continue to grow, to continue to excel in the, in the ventures that I'm in. So I am not the 30 cent pen guy, right? I'm not bending over for a freaking penny or a five, but just, you have to take and, and, and look at your businesses like you've got a certain fixed amount of energy, right, that you can spend. you got a certain fixed amount of time and energy that you can spend on the business. And if you're attracting these crazy people, and there's a lot of them today because entitlement's real big in America today. It's, you know, every it's the we're now dealing with the kids that got the trophies no matter what. And they've kind of grown up and they're like adventuring out into the world with other humans. And so you've got a fixed amount of time and energy. You got to decide like, what, what can I use this on? That's going to move the needle in the company because the company is my life. It's, it's the same thing. It's my founder, CEO, this is my thing, right? So if the company's aggravating, I'm aggravated. The custom, if the customers are aggravating the company by default, they're aggravating me. If the cash is going down, if the cash is going up, that's, so I've got, I know I've got this much bandwidth to play with. Well, I don't want to just throw that at whatever the next thing is that I'm not reactive. I want to be proactive. I want to look at the customer as almost the matrix. Yes, it is an individual person. When you're dealing with the individual human at the point of sale, on the back, whatever it is, when you're dealing with the human, treat them like an individual. But overall, you need to be able to zoom out and see the code in the matrix and say, ah, oh, look at us. We're dumb. You know, it's like, let's just tweak this, this, and this and solve the problem. Yeah. I may still have to work through the problem a little bit because I've, I've inherited it up to here and there's a backlog, but if I can boom, cut it off. An example of this is a great example. Of this is my tech support library on the, on the website every day. Hey, <laughs> my thing don't work. I'm like, well, it fucking worked when you picked it up. And then it was, well, you know, who are you? We don't recognize your name. Oh, I bought it secondhand from a guy. This kid's three years old. Or, uh, yeah, I put a different pump on there. Or it's, it's a million of that shit, right? Or, I mean, guys, it literally didn't have any gas in the pressure washer. There was a bunch of those. <laughs> Call it, right? And I'm dealing with it. And Dusty, business partner, Dusty's dealing with it. Now, Dusty's much more patient than I am. 
that's not a benefit because he would keep dealing with it. It don't I get aggravated easy. So what Cody does is I say, uh, no, to hell with that. Stop, pause. <laughs> Let's stay in the shop tonight till midnight. Film a bunch, like give me your list of what's your common call ins, right? Give me the list. Boom, 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 boom. Skid in the back, walk around, chop them up, five minute vids, add, 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 add to the site. Now tell everybody to go to the site, fix your own shit, right? Read your purchase agreement, and you realize if you read that, we're not a franchise, you bought a skid. Okay. If you got a problem, something legit, we're, we're here to help. Again, I'm saving the customer, the customer service energy for the real scenarios where, you know, the guy's got a locked up carburetor that's two months old. Well, that's under warranty. We, we're an OEM. We took all the steps to become an OEM for a reason so that we could provide the warranty through the engine companies that we use, right? So that we've already done the work to take care of the customer. What the customer wants, the cust the matrix of the customers, they want to eat you alive like piranhas. Right. But if you allow them to do that, you actually, you're not here anymore to help anybody. And that's one of the, the downsides of the reality that you're talking about is the simple fact that because of the way that, that, that you describe that and the way I had, I actually, I was doing a lot of the customer support for quote IQ initially, and I had to remove myself from that role because I have a, uh, like a fuse that's smaller than this. Like, I don't even think we can see it. That's how small <laughs> my fuse is. And the expectation of people is significantly higher than what they're actually paying for. And, and, you know, like we're providing a phenomenal product in quote IQ, you're providing great stuff at, from Southeast Softwash, right? But people expect this and then they get angry or the guy that bought the secondhand skid from some dude. And then they call Cody and Cody's like, uh, yeah, it's three years old and you didn't buy it from us. Um, it, then that guy gets on Facebook and he's like, oh, Southeast Softwash, they're a bunch of assholes. I, I've got a Southeast Softwash skid and this and that and the other. Some guy just popped up and he was like, yeah, I don't buy anything from you guys anymore because, you know, it's low quality or, you know, uh, it's overpriced. No, it's overpriced for you. Southeast Softwash, quote, IQ is too expensive. Jesus, it's it's honestly an eighth of the price of our nearest competitor with three times the value. And I feel that that's what Southeast does as well. And, and then it's like the expectations. And and Chris, Christopher Henson, he just popped up, uh, and, and I'm not going to put Cody on the screen right now because I know how he will react. And I think I know who Chris is. I think he's a quote IQ user. But he said, after mixing um, Southeast soft wash surfactants 15 to 1, how long of a shelf life does it have? I've noticed after a month in seeing reduced performance. And yes there is going to be a reduction in performance. If you have any kind of chemical, it's, I don't even know what it's called, but there is a degradation. It's just like your bleach. Your bleach doesn't last forever. My question is, why is it taking you a month to work through a little jug of Southeast soft wash surfactant? It shouldn't be, or you shouldn't mix as much. Right. And so these are the problems. Like Chris is a good dude, but right. In theory, he could probably, you know, get on the Facebook group. He's like, Southeast soft wash surfactants are shit. They don't hold right. up. They don't hold up. Right. I know he's not going to do that, but like, yeah, he's not asking like, that will. He's not asking like a super crazy question, but I can just tell from the question that he's new. You know, he don't, he don't know. And he's, he's asking questions. So here's, I'll give you the answer, Chris. <clears throat> I think I've seen his name around too. So if you mix it 15 to one in water, which is what we're making it for with a blendable system last forever okay it's a concentrate put it in the tank now you are exposing it to water and sunlight so it will start degrading but it's it's not like mega fast to mike's point it should you shouldn't game it a month we're expecting like the average guy that uses soap like for real soaps they're burning through you know they fill their soap tank up they may work two days out of that soap tank or whatever depending on the jobs and then they're refilling you know multi-times per week in their surfactant tank if you're throwing it into your bleach tank, you know, and you're downstreaming out of it, same thing. Because it's going to immediately start eating it, you know, the bleach. It, it, you can do that, but you should be basically working that that soap for the, the, the first half of the week's jobs or whatever. So if you're trying to run it a month, you can do that. If that's where you're at, you know, you don't have the customer flow incoming to burn it up, then just game it where you're using less, you know, so it's still staying in the jug. But yeah, exactly. Like if that guy... If, if that question was asked and then, you know, I didn't answer it because I don't answer everything. I don't give yeah. a shit. I, answer, I can't. It's a million. You know, the little meme from SpongeBob where it's like a million fish in the restaurant. And they're like, my, 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 my. That's yeah. what we get, guys. And it's not that we don't want to. I, I can't even use Messenger 
or Facebook like normal people because there's there's probably 150 unopened. I can't even use it. Like right. Mike and the guys, I get a new phone number three times a year because it leaks yeah, out. Is, and I'm like, I nuke that one, get a new one. <laughs> Cody is saved in my phone right now as Cody new <laughs> new. <laughs> right. that's, that's it's not that we don't want to. It's just like what Mike is saying that the average person today, they feel so entitled for their little spend. You know, they're and it's odd that the guys that spend big money, the Todd Ketchow type of guy, right? That that guy spends fifty five thousand on a trailer. Todd's got my number. Todd doesn't bother me. If Todd bothers me, it's something legit. Or he, you know. So what you want to do is try to. Just take a page from the book, okay, and zoom out at your company. And if you're dealing with a lot of silly, fr frustrating people, understand that your pricing is probably attracting that person, your marketing, your branding, and the yeah. way that you keep responding to it. It's okay to be there. Like, we all kind of go there. It's just you don't have to stay there. You can get this thing to where it makes you money, and it's not a pain in the ass. It's wild as hell. It's possible to get it to that point. Right. It's a little right. bit of a journey, but you're not going to just stumble into your business. You know, we were we were on vacation a couple of weeks ago. I'm on I'm on the boat with my boys, deep sea fishing. We're going to get these fish mounted. I'm you know it was a great it was a fun time, and the company made a quarter million dollars while I was on on the beach. I'm like, well, that's wild as hell. But it yeah. didn't just happen. It had to be planned and strategic. You got to hire the right people. You got to set the right tone. That's all kind of stuff that you can't really like see it happening. But the, the culture of your company as you start hiring and growing, you know, if you're one man on a truck, it's all you anyway, baby. Like you wearing all the hats. But if your plan is to get it, that's what Mike's done with his wash business. It's it's not autopilot. Like it'll never be full autopilot unless you have an exit one day. But you're trying to get it to where you don't hate the company that you started and you found it in it. It, it can be done. Promise you. And you, 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 what's so it's crazy and something that you just touched on about the autopilot thing. It is not 100 percent, you know, on autopilot. It can't be any service based business can never be truly autopilot. But I have created a culture and I have created the systems in my business to allow me to essentially automate a large portion of what I do, what needs to be done, not what I do, what needs to be done on a daily basis. And then we took that and we built quote IQ, right? And then we have taken the best things that we need for our business to get to that point, right? It took me 15 years to figure all this out. We, we spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars developing quote IQ. And because of that, you guys are able to take this for next to freaking nothing and, and, and implement all of the systems and the processes that are going to make your life easier. Just like Cody said, you're on the truck, you're doing the marketing, you're doing the sales, you're doing the bookkeeping, you're doing absolutely everything. You're buying the equipment, you're taking care of the equipment, you're, you know, everything. And, and that is overwhelming. And what, what, what we want to do for you guys is make it as easy as possible, whether that's buying great equipment, buying great chemicals, uh, and, and not having to cobble together all kinds of things and try to get by, um, instead of trying to figure out everything and, and having papers everywhere and, and stuff like that, oh, yeah. you got it all in one place. Right. And so, you know, I think that, 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 that's one of the most important things that, that is new people or people that are in business that just haven't really adapted to where we are in 2024. And that is with, you know, technology, we have to utilize technology. Cody's done that answering services, um, the, the whole, all of your tech support, right? That used to be a person on the phone. Now it's not. And, and things have gotten a lot better, have gotten a lot smoother in your business. I, I close huge jobs all the time via text message or just sending, you know, our, our quotes through quote IQ because, I know that the people that are making the decisions, they've got less time than I do probably, right? right? And they appreciate the fact that we are condensing that process and making it easy for them to buy, right? And that's what you guys need to do out there too. It's crazy. And then the other thing is be resourceful, right? You talked about entitlement, pain. Uh, Tyler Payne talked about people are entitled today. This is the, one of the things that I sent in the group text the other day. And you know what I'm talking about. Hey, Mike, I'm curious, what tax form would a single member of an LLC file? I'm trying to obtain an EIN number. And it's asking uh, is if my business needs to file a form 720. After doing research, I don't believe this applies to my business, but I just want to be sure. 
I, I would, I wish I knew I, that means I would be much smarter than I am, but I'm not. And so, you know, like this guy asked the question because maybe he thought I knew, I wish I did. So if you're watching, I'm not that smart, but <laughs> I'm not the guy that you need to ask. That's when you call an accountant. That's when you, you know, get a little deeper into your research on the old Google, right? Because you can get the answers that you need. Don't leave it on uh, a YouTube video that I might or might not see. Right. So, yeah, put in, you know, man, when I'm, I'm going to go back to running a truck because I like doing it, but I did it the hard way. Legal pad paper, like wrote everything. I've done that. You're washing phones ringing. I've done that. Like no CRM. I've done that. Dumb, dumb as hell. Drive to every job to quote it. Thinking you're doing a good thing. Oh, I, I do in-person quotes. Customer don't give shit. I've done all that. So it's like the new guys are, or the old guys who haven't, like you said, grown with the times, they don't realize how nice it is to have some of the stuff that is uh, better for the customer. You know, may not be better for this one, but for the customer matrix and mass, it's better. Better for you, the business owner. It's better all the way around. And it, what it does is it takes up that big tranche of bandwidth. It frees up a big chunk of that. And so like, Mike, I've watched Mike go and close big pressure washing job. One of the reasons that he can do that is because he's not bogged down with all the daily. Like it freed him up to like beep, come up here, boat still running, and now he can sport fish for the trophies because he knows the nets are they're doing their thing back there. Like we're going to the bay with full nets, it's on autopilot, right? But now I get the trophy fish while I'm trolling fishing. But if you're trying to, if you're manning the nets manually, you never get to, like, you're now you're a blind squirrel getting a big acorn every once in a while. Now it sort of becomes fun because it doesn't really matter if you close that job or not. It ain't going to make or break the month or the quarter, and you get to be more casual, and that's why Mike's got a style with that, right? It's a flippant, not pushy, don't care if I get it or not, love to do it, love to work with you guys. It's a whole vibe, but you can't have that vibe if you're oh, pulling the head, like you're dying, you're dying on the sword. There's a biblical, there's a, it's not a parable, it's an Old Testament thing, but there's a, there's, it's a real life thing. Dude's chopping wood, right? And his axe head flies off. And Elisha, I think it was Elisha, did the miracle, made the axe head float, and he put it back on because it was a big deal. Lose a uh, axe head in the Bronze Age, right? He said it was borrowed. He borrowed the damn tool in the first place, so he had to get that. That is a cool story. Go read it. What a lot of us do is the axe head flies off, and we just keep beating the tree with the damn wooden handle. We're like, man, this is hard. Man, this is hard. Yeah, it is because you don't have a freaking axe head on there, and that's what we're saying. We can see it. And if I were to go hang out with Elon, Elon would look at, I wouldn't have to go that far, but if I went to hang out with a guy that's doing, you know, a hundred million a year and he looked at me, he would look at me the same way and say, bro, what are you doing? You need to do XXX. Like Hormozy would look at me and just run me down and fix me. But we can try to transpose some of the knowledge running an eight figure company to some of you guys that are struggling to get to a six figure company. And I can just say, no, 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 no don't do that. Do this, 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 and this. Get quote IQ, like boom. And yeah, we're trying, it, it's, I get it. Like Mike, I know that, I know the guys, I know Mike and Justin personally. They want to sell you quote IQ, but I swear to, I swear to all things holy, you need that shit. Like, I know when you try to sell it, like, oh, of course he say, he's, he's trying to, he is, but he's just telling you, like, the thing is awesome, okay? It's like the guy wheeling around a, a two gallon a minute, and you're like, bro, throw that in the trash, get you a four or five at least. Well, of course you're going to make me spend money. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really just trying to help you. Like, swear, it, you need this shit. It is, it is life-changing. I'll give you an example of something that ain't me trying to pitch you on something because I don't have anything to do with this. Our website does multi, multi seven figures a year at e-commerce alone. Okay, we used to have a WordPress site that we built ourselves. Emily built it. It worked. Clunky as hell. It worked. We got a new site. Now, Footbridge helped us with the old site. The skin made it look better, but Footbridge don't do e-com, so they kind of helped us. But what a guy on a truck, like getting a getting a Footbridge site, it's the same thing with like Code IQ or tell them to buy ProGrade Kims or anything else. They, If you're not careful, you'll feel like, oh, you're trying to sell me. I'm like, yeah, because 
You need it. You, you don't want to run on a homemade website. You don't. And it ain't no money. It's like $1.99 a month. It ain't no money. No way. So go over and get you the site. Like, thank me later. There ain't a pro dude out there that would tell you to not have a pro site. So what does that tell you? There ain't a pro dude out there that's not running some software. So what does that tell you? It's not that we're all just trying to sell you something. You got to get over that anyway, because to be good at sales, you got to be good at buying. But we're not trying to, it ain't, it ain't a shit product. It ain't like, it's a, it's a great product. If I stumbled on the cold IQ and I didn't know dick about it, didn't know who built it. I'd be like, well, that's pretty damn good. I do that already with, you know, Jill's office kind of sucked for us because we're a different company, but for a guy on a truck, answer force Jill's off. I wish to hell that it was somebody I knew because I'm pitching them all the time. But like the guy on the truck, bro, get that crap. It's going to save your life. Like you will thank me later. So when they're telling you about some of these technology things you can do, or the, the training's a good example. There's just so many good examples with the training. It's like, think about Mike, think about the new guy that's at day one. And he looks at how to wash or any of the training assets. And he doesn't want to buy it because he feels like, oh, those guys are just trying to sell courses. Well, yeah. But think about it. If that dude goes the course route or he goes the learn it on my own route, let's calculate the loss revenue because you can learn it. You'll learn it. First year, you stay busy. You do a bunch of jobs. You will learn all that shit. You're going to tear stuff up. You're going to be inefficient. You're going to mess up. You're going to be repainting a half like. Fill in the list. Okay, so let's do the math on what that cost. Was the course worth? Well, hell, if you're just a little more efficient, right? The course paid for itself. But guys have such a hard time because we're constantly, like you said, New York City, you're constantly being handed flyers of people trying to sell you stuff. So when we get on here and we're doing our job, we're trying to sell you stuff. You have that knee-jerk reaction to not, to not take the flyer. But at some point, you've got to because here's what's fixing to happen. You're starting a business. You know what you're going to do? You're going to be on the same street with us trying to hand your customers a flyer. But to hold your whole life, you've said, flyers are dumb. Don't, y'all all suck. Salespeople are awful. Y'all are going to hell in a hand. No, you suck. You're with lawyers and insurance agents and salespeople. They all are going. But then you're going to go try to be a salesperson to your house wash, roof wash, driveway wash customers. So you got to fix that in your mind, first of all. And then you got to realize that we're just trying to help you. Am I trying to make money at the same time? Absolutely. As you should. It's your job to look at the reviews, look at the, uh, like the data's there, you know, like there's testimonials at the wazoo. So is the product right? Is it tight? Is it going to move the needles? Is it going to get me to where I want to go? If yes, pay the tab. If no, go join somewhere else, get, get it, get in another store, right? That's going to sell you what you need. But it's our job to tell you about these things. I would, it would be a shame for Mike to take his 20 plus years of running an off the truck business and not solve this massive efficiency problem that every guy on a truck has for freaking nothing. No money a month, basically zero. It's like, I don't need how much, I don't even know how much code IQ is. It's so cheap, it ain't even a number. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing we, when we talk about this all the time, like, and you can, you can kind of look at it from the perspective of how many jobs will it take you to pay for X, Y, or Z? And I, when, when I was, you know, full time doing, you know, just only focused on the wash business, right. And there was an expense, there was something that I wanted. I would look at it in the, from the perspective of, okay, that's like four roof jobs, right? Four roof jobs. Yep. That's, $2,400. I can get that. I'll, you know, whatever. That's how I was looking at things. How to wash. You can get how to wash. And even if you're brand new, you can go out and sell a house wash for $400, right? You can go out and sell a house wash for $200. These are not astronomical numbers. One job pays for all the training that you need. Imagine if you decided instead of going the route of owning a service business, you were like, okay, I'm going to go to college. College is like 40, 50 grand, depending on what yeah. school you go to. That's at a cheap state school. You go somewhere nicer, you're paying that a year. And then you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to get a job after I graduate for, you know, $120,000. If I'm lucky, that's not going to make up for it. What if, I mean, that's, that's how I look at things. Like it only costs you a small amount, one house wash to pay for that. Then you look at something like the ultimate package in Quote IQ, where you get InstaQuote, which allows customers to schedule themselves on your website. It allows them to get 
quotes that are 100% accurate, and then all the other features, right? Everything that you need to, to efficiently run and automate your business are right there. And it's like, I want to say it's $129 a month. That's like, that's like a shitty driveway, right? And there's 30 <laughs> days in a month in most months. Okay. One, one job in one day pays for all of that. And there are still guys who are like, that's too much, which is fine. That's why we have the free version where you can get a lot of the features that you need, estimates, invoices, collecting payments, right? There's a lot of right. free features. We've got the review multiplier and quote IQ that's in the free version. And we did this because we understand that not everybody understands how important this is, right? There are guys that, you know, will pay to come and hear us talk and be like, okay, how many of you guys have a Google business profile? And like half of yeah. the 300 people that are there raised yeah. our hands, right? And we're like, holy shit, these guys just spent a bunch of money to come here and learn, but- they don't even have a Google business profile page yet. And they're certainly not collecting reviews because they can't because they don't have that. But what we've done in Quote IQ for free in the free version, and obviously it's in all the other uh, tiers as well, is the review multiplier. So you send your customer the quote. They, they say, yeah, that's good. They accept it. You go and you do the job. Then you send them the invoice. When they pay the invoice, they are automatically redirected to your Google review. It takes them directly there, right? There's there's no more, hey, uh, could you please leave me a review and then send them, you know, like we do follow-up emails in the nurturing sequence with review requests because they're so important. But when you pay your invoice and then all of a sudden, boom, Mike's, hey, leave Mike a quote or uh, leave Mike a review, like that's huge. Uh, and that's free, right? So there's a ton of stuff that you can do for free. And then when you start making money, then that $29 for the first you know, tier is very cheap. And then you're like, I, I want customers to be able to quote themselves and schedule themselves based on my schedule. Then like, what's that worth? Hell of a lot more than 129. So it's just crazy to me. And again, it all goes back to like what you were saying, you know, when we're first starting out, we are able to, we are not able to make the decisions that we make once the business has grown a little bit. And we are able to be a little bit more picky. We are able to um, decide who we want to work for. Yeah. And, and we're able to dictate pricing a little bit more too, when we have adequate lead flow coming in, that's filling up the schedule. So what you, you know, these, what you've got is, you, you, what you've got is guys, you start making money, you price correctly, you get your marketing down, you got leads coming in. It buys you wiggle room. It buys you wiggle room to try Kim. It buys you wiggle room to buy an extra part and throw it in the garage and not worry about it. Yeah. In the early days, you're so hand to mouth, like boom, 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 boom. I get it. Like I, I, I did that shit. I, I understand it. But Thank the you. goal is to not get prideful about that and to try to here, I'll give you an example. I was on the phone yesterday with Ashley Westfall, a chick, okay? But Ashley is a killer. And she's up in Michigan, I think. I think that's yep. where Ashley And she's like, hey, so we had a Zoom call scheduled. She just wanted to reach out, talk, run r run some things by me. So I was like, hey, I can do it. You know, I'm free most of the day. And she said, okay, well, well, I can do it at like 1030 or 1130 or, you know, in, around 1230. And I got jobs between all those. So I just enough time to do my job. I was like, I know I can do that, you know, and I know Ashley can too. It was just a thing I thought about like, God dang, this chick, Ashley, is going to knock out four or five jobs today and she just like needs a 40 minute window. Yeah, well, I can't do it. I can't do one. You bump it to 130, I can get that job done and then I'll be back in the truck. And I was like, <laughs> look at this. I'll be damned. Ashley Westfall, a female in a, in a male dominated industry who just put her mind to it. And she's pretty smart and did a lot of research. Do you think she's knocking four or five jobs out a day? Think about the revenue that comes with that. Do you think she's worried about put bridge cost, the website cost, or doing a postcard mania or whatever, you know, doing a marketing run? I got, yeah, it's, you know, it's what month is it? Yeah, we need to do a big marketing push this month. Doesn't matter. It's not a blip on the radar. But if you got, she's doing more jobs a day than a lot of guys have booked for the week. So the extra revenue, and it ain't nothing. She ain't panicking about it. It's just like, yeah, I'm going. To, I can do it at two because I'll have should have that other job. And these little windows, like boop, 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 boop. She's got by two o'clock. Homie done made some bank. So what that means is she gets to walk past the pennies. She gets to mentally walk past the customer she doesn't want because she doesn't need every customer. She gets to be more selective. She gets to say, yeah, I saw that new software come out. She told me about a a wood cleaning class that she went to that she didn't like. She didn't even get to take the class. If I threw the guy's name out, you'd know what I was talking about. 
because she got there and they had rescheduled the damn <laughs> dates and didn't send her an email or nothing. Flights flew to this place. Wood cleaning, big thing. They had changed the fucking dates and didn't tell her. Damn. And she was like, hmm, okay, well, that sucks. Whatever. I'll never do business with y'all. She can afford. Now, she could have pitched a fit, and rightfully so in that scenario. But because she's got, she's done the things. She's implemented the things. She's done the things, right? And all that's done is built her up to the point where she now gets to sit in the captain's chair and say, hmm, let's go that way a little bit. Hmm, okay, I like that, but let's adjust. Um, that, this is good. Oh, no, this is bad. Let's let's go this way. She gets to be strategic and tactical. But if you're book a job, do a job, book a job, market. Book a job, do a job, get paid, market. If you're riding that roller coaster, you don't have the power. You're so... Your butthole is tighter than Dick's hat band all the time. And so it forces you into this place of, of scarcity and fear and lashing out and freaking out. You're always in, and it ain't good for you, man. Like Mike died one time, you know, yeah. like Mike's, Mike's resurrected. This is Mike 2.0, but the stress of doing all that stuff, it's not, you don't want to run that way. I'll do it. I knew when I signed up to do this, I was like, all right, it's going to take a couple of years. But I got this goal of this promised land. Like, I'll saddle up. Mike, same way. We'll sat. We'll, we're workhorses. If anything, we got to work at getting out. You know, it's our natural mode. So we got to work at getting out of the saddle and enjoying it because that's how we're wired. But you don't have to live that way in your business, guys. And it takes cash flow, which takes lead flow, and doing all of these things to take some of those hats off of you and right. give them to automation because you can't hire. You're not going to hire a receptionist, but if you can automate it out with an offsite team that's, you know, not a lot of money, that's a win. You're not going to hire a bookkeeper, but if you're running quote IQ, it syncs with QuickBooks, you know, you can kind of, you can, you see all these things are force multipliers in your business so that you and a helper. Now you operate like an old school six man crew with two chicks in the office and a mechanic. You're operating like a much bigger fluid machine than you actually are, which the damnedest thing is. That gets you to the place to be bigger than you are. If you want to be bigger than you are, you got to act bigger than you are. And one day you'll turn around like, damn, we're, damn, we're bigger than we were. You have to yeah. start running in that mindset, that mode. That's that's the trick. And it's hard. It's easy to see. It's easy to see when you get there and you look back, right? But on the front end, it just looks like a big mystery. Right. And guys, that's why there's so much churn. They get in, they... They they sell their equipment in the fall and like out of hell with that. And you're like, well, yeah. how much did you make? Well, I made a hundred thousand. Where's it at? I don't know. <laughs> well, right. hate it for you. you. You know, you talk about Ashley, and, and we've known Ashley for, for many years. And Ashley, <clears throat> Ashley's a smart woman. Ashley Very. is a hardworking human, but Ashley is also one of the one of the people that it, 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 she stands out in my mind. She is like a Todd Catchow who the, or a Mike Terman, right? These are all very successful people. And they also understand, like myself and like Cody, they understand they don't know everything. They don't know the best ways to do everything. And, and when you understand that and you're willing to invest in yourself, in your education, in your business, in, in, in software, whatever the case is, you're only going to reap the rewards, right? And I'm not trying to sell you anything, right? But it, it was something that I struggled with very early on. And, and it's, it's, it's crazy to me because as much as I would hate to admit it, I was probably one of the guys that would be like three ninety nine dollars for how to wash. That's preposterous. I can learn it on my own. Right? Like that's kind of who I was. Um, but as things evolved, I was like, okay, I'm at a point now where I'm kind of at an impasse and I, I don't know right. what the next step is. Dude, if I told you like Justin and I paid 30 grand, $30,000, um, to be a part of a, um, uh, like uh, to, it's basically, they're teaching us something that we didn't know, but it's something that's very valuable in the, uh, in the world that we're in now, as far as software development. Um, but we are surrounding ourselves with the smartest, the brightest people that have been there that have done that and are guiding us. Just like you said, Hormozy could take each of us and be like, wow, you guys are way off base steer this way and push the gas and you're going to see a, a, a serious change in trajectory in your business. Yep. Um, uh, we, I, there was a guy that he, he had a software company 
Um, he sold it to Intuit, which owns QuickBooks and like TurboTax, all these companies. Um, he was a CEO of this startup company. He ended up selling it to, to QuickBooks, I want to say for $30 million, right? And then since he started a couple other businesses, I was able to connect with him. And uh, it, it was, it was it, $1,500 for half an hour but it was worth every single penny ended up that he liked Justin and I, and we ended up staying on the call for like an hour and a half because he was just enamored with us because we're so out there as far as software development companies go and, and how our approach is and how we kind of came about. And you got some redneck in Georgia and some, you know, Justin over in Louisiana and this guy's out in Silicon Valley, you know, rubbing like he has dinner with Elon Musk, right? Like mm -hmm. that's the type of guy that this is. And, uh, and, and, but had I not made that investment, I would have been here as opposed to here because that cut the learning curve so much yeah. that I was, I mean, and, and it, it used to hurt to, to, to pay. Right. And like, I don't want to tell anybody, it's like, Hey, I just dropped 30 K to do this. Right. You know, like it, it's, it's insane. The first, the first batch buster ad adventure. Yeah. We were 90 something thousand dollars into that valve and we scrapped the whole project, threw it away, found a new guy, found a new team, found a new designer. It was like, Hey, see this, don't make this. Yeah. That guy was like, when we were nearly a year, you know, batch busters, there was a year of a previous iteration that just got thrown. The, I've got the little, the little prototype. I've got the other prototype right there in my little, display case in the office that was the first that that 3d printed prototype right there was five thousand dollars for them to three one for them to send it to me because it was like the ultimate version of 3d print let me grab it it's right here and what's crazy is cody grabs that is um quote iq when we first got into this we went and we found a development team we hired said development team. We spent a tremendous amount of money with this, this group. And then we realized very quickly that they were not capable of doing all of the things that we were hoping to accomplish. And we had to transition. We had to call an audible and we had to go a different direction. And it cost us a, a, not as much as Cody spent on that first batch buster, but um, definitely a bunch. And uh, you know, it's one of those things like when something doesn't work, don't be afraid to cut bait. Don't be afraid to eat a little humble pie and move on. Yeah, because you have to start looking at it as, and that's what we're saying, guys. Like, try try the Kim. It's so funny. We get guys asking for samples. So we made like a little joke. They're literally like a, mil, a half a milliliter. <laughs> you have, guys have samples. Like, we sell them in one gallons. I mean, that's, that's a sample. A sample, dumbass. Like, but they, they, that's where their thinking's at. So I'm trying to help them by saying, look, man, to get to this point, I was already 100K nearly in the one that you've never seen that got thrown in the ditch. And then we started on this journey and add you a year, right? And I don't know what, I, I don't I don't even know what the total of that adventure was. Like, it's probably half a million before we got to this. Now, except I don't have the couplers on this one that's in there. But this was the first one I took out of the, the box of a completed batch buster. Right. So, and it's great. But I say that just to say, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I had to be willing to gamble and bet to get to this point of what's the, what's the question mark? What's the dollar amount? What's the top end you're willing to spend to learn and to get to a point that you want to get to? Because now we have a thing like it exists and it's awesome. And it makes a lot of money. And it's it's a brand that I own, a product that I will own forever, right? So when we're saying, hey, take a gamble on, on a website, take a gamble on an app, take a gamble on a, it ain't really a gamble because as you see other guys out there using it, right? They ain't no guys using this shit. Who, who mo get testimonial from? We're, in, we're exploring the dark reaches of Antarctica here. So with all of the stuff that you guys are, you know, feel like you're taking a gamble on, you got testimonials of other guys using the product. Had a guy yes, day before yesterday was like, hey, I want to get the Kims, but I'm just not sure they work. Yes, the hell you are. Go join the Kim group. And there's a thousand testimonials. I'm just not sure the course is worth it. Yes, the hell you are. Go read the, like we've made the video compilation of a billion dudes saying, man, it was great. I learned so much. You know what it is. 
You just are scared to pull the trigger. Try pulling the trigger on some shit you don't know what it is. Try pulling the trigger on that. So if we can do it, like we're just dudes, bro. Redneck dudes, like they're fooling around with software. You know what SaaS is? Software as a service, S-A-A-S. You ain't never had to go fool around with that and not know what there's. We, we're in the new world. Like Mike and Justin, bro, when you when y'all started the Quote IQ adventure, you had no idea how much kudzu was between here and El Dorado, right? Could be 20 yards. Your mangroves, dude, could be 20 yards, could be 20 miles. So we're asking you guys, we're telling you, hey, it's 20 yards. We can see it from this crow's nest. Swear, bro, you're right there at it. And guys are still hesitant to take the gamble. If you want to be the Ashley Westfalls of the world, what you do is you just take the guy in the crow's nest word for it and you start chopping. Because pretty quickly, you're going to get to where you're going. If there's guys out there like Elon, so that's pretty cool. Mike's like two levels away from a guy that, you know, that this is seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's pretty cool. How do you get in those rooms? You take the bet. You place the bet. You learn the thing. You get the skill. You move the needle, right? You go to the next level. You go to the next level. If you want to get to that level, you're never going to get there with that that broke mindset because it's always in con conservation mode. You're always in hold what I got land. But you can't you can't take new ground that way because you're not willing to invest to move the thing that needs to be moved to get new ground. So there's two ways to make more money. There's two ways. There's two ways to build the biggest building in town. Build the biggest building in town or run around tearing everybody else's building down. At the end of the day, you didn't build a damn thing. Build the biggest building in town that you can say, I you look back in five years and say, I built that. And then, you know, you may decide to run it forever. You may decide to sell it, may decide to move on with life. But if you don't do these things, guys, take advantage of the technology. You guys got, man, you ought to go back and be my dad, 1987, typing up flyers on damn driving around in a Toyota pickup. Well, like, I don't know how anybody ever trusted him to clean their roof, but he did it. You know, like if dad had the tech that we have today in, in that time period, bro, he did, he'd have crushed it. But, you know. That's where we're at. So take advantage of these tools, guys. Take advantage of the equipment. Take advantage of the Kims. If you're brand new and you don't know, you don't know your ass from a hole in the ground, take advantage of the courses. Dude, it's like you can watch them in your pajamas and you, in a weekend, you will know how to go out and, and make money in the physical aspect. Take advantage of the of the apps. Use your phone. It's it's not there for cat videos. It's there for making money. That's true. Well, cool. Um, hopefully, I think, you know, I think we provided a lot of value. I hope hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Cody, thank you for coming on. If you guys don't know Cody, which is not likely if you're in this video right now, southeastsoftwash.com, the equipment, the chemicals, uh, the parts, you name it, they've got it. Uh, they've also got a bunch of other things on their website. So go check it out, southeastsoftwash.com. And uh, you can get all of your stuff that you need there. And uh, that's about it. Go download Quote IQ. Go do it to it, baby. All right, brother. Thank you. See you, bro.